Welcome to Policy on Demand's Week in Review. I'm Pat Brown. What would you tell clients are your takeaways from this week? So if patience is a virtue, we are all gonna have to get a little bit better practicing this virtue of patience because Congress has left town after getting a strong bipartisan vote from the House of Rep Representatives on the tax extenders bill without Senate action on the bill. The Senate has left town. So what becomes of that bill? We won't know the answer to that question until at least when the Senate comes back from their President's Day re recess. And all eyes for that are gonna be initially at least on Democratic Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who will need to decide how he wants to proceed when it comes to the bill, which has now ma made its way over from the House and is awaiting Senate action. Which question related to policy did you get asked the most and how did you respond? So a lot of focus and attention this week from taxpayers has shifted back to the OECD project. We're awaiting additional guidance from the OECD as it relates in particular to deferred tax accounting. There are two significant issues here. One, the OECD has indicated they have a desire to simplify certain aspects of the deferred tax accounting computation. We don't know exactly what they mean by that. And we do know that as the OECD has provided additional guidance from the original model rules as it relates to deferred taxes, we've tended to get more complexity, not more simplification. But the OECD has indicated they're trying to simplify that computation, so we'll have to wait and see what that means. The other very significant area relates to the so-called pushdown of deferred taxes from headquarters jurisdictions to branches and CFCs. Now, this is an area that there was an original guidance or, or approach taken in the model rules and commentary, and then the OECD seemed to back away from that. That backing away led to a lot of concern from taxpayers about what direction the OECD was going here. So the OECD has indicated they're revisiting, but we don't know yet where they're gonna come out on that issue either. Where should companies focus their attention in the coming week? So we're in a little bit of a lull period. So when I think about the week ahead, I think we're probably not likely to have a lot of action here in Washington over the course of the next week, but this is a brief lull period before we can expect a very significant amount of activity looking forward. Congress coming back into session in a couple of weeks, We've got the President's State of the Union address. Of course, the Treasury Green Book will be released. And frankly, after we get past this tax extenders bill, a lot of focus and attention here in Washington on 2025. So my advice to companies is take advantage of this time, figure out what your key policy priorities are as we head into 2025. Things are gonna pick up and get very busy moving forward throughout the rest of this year. There's a brief opportunity here to think about your key policy priorities as we head into what will very likely be a major tax bill in 2025. And my starting point for talking to companies about that is to be very blunt about it. No one in Washington wakes up every morning asking you how they can help manage your ETR. They care about policies that will advance jobs and economic growth in the United States. So as we think about what are the key policy priorities for each company, each taxpayer, we have to think about it through the lens of jobs, investment, and growth here in the United States, because that is how policymakers will want to hear about it.